Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk, and of course today as we are airing is Saturday, September 17th, and today we are talking about some of the finer details, the upcoming events, and the many ways people can get involved for the upcoming unveiling of the Benito Juarez statue that is going to be happening at the Chamizal National Memorial. Speaking with some, of course, the organizers and uh, members of the 12 Travelers Monument of the Southwest here. So you can, of course, find us on air, online, live streaming on KTSMRadio.com and with full video on the El Paso History Radio Show Facebook page and YouTube channel, as well as on our partner Facebook pages. And remember, in El Paso, when? And this is, of course, the place where we say Texas history begins in El Paso. Do we have a history moment today at the top of Hour 2 from documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk. Today, talking about the history of San Jacinto Plaza in downtown El Paso. And yes, San Jacinto is the way we say it around here anyway and of course our guests in studio today to talk about some of these subjects and the, again many things going on we do of course have with us here we have uh cynthia skevington bum secretary for the 12 travelers and jody polk schwartz founding member again 12 travelers memorial of the southwest thank you both very much for joining us here today it's our pleasure great thank you for asking us absolutely happy to talk about this here because okay i have had in my life probably a lot more exposure than say the average person to the background the information what's been going on with all of these projects here and there was at least one comment in the promo to this show asking essentially wait 12 travelers what's been going on with this here i've known a couple here so this is of course we are talking about what's coming up the unveiling of the fourth of the series of monuments in this whole concept here and we have talked about this previously on the program here last month as a matter of fact here but for those who aren't familiar who may have never heard of this concept of the 12 travelers here whenever you you meet someone like that or get the chance to speak with them how do you go about introducing or discussing the subject well there's so much history here in el paso yes that <laughs> um, frankly when i was growing up wasn't available mm. and we didn't have it so when i left I didn't know very much, and that was in 1960. So when I came back, I had this wonderful opportunity to be connected with the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest, and it's taught me a lot about what we what went on for 500 centuries before. Yeah, the five amount centuries. five centuries. Five centuries, 500 years. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly here. Uh, though, of course, I mean, there's been prehistory that we also commemorate in its own way as yes. part of this here, as we see in many of the, uh, you know, natural monuments and uh, places even where some of these uh, monuments exist currently here, mm -hmm. such as uh, the Susan McGuffin statue exists on one of those prehistory sites as well. So there are further connections with the further parts of history. But yeah, what you talk about there, I know that particularly for, for Jackson Polk, a previous host of the show here, uh, the, the fact that history wasn't taught back in those eras, eras here, you know, of the you know middle to late last century, was more than a little bit of a travesty, and that by no means has stopped I, in my own time being in school in uh, you know early this century. Yeah, seventh grade, there was one chapter about El Paso in the state history textbook, and it started with El Paso is a very dry city, getting less than twelve inches of rain a year, because that's. <laughs> absolutely the most important thing you could talk about for our region right like yeah that's the summary here and why one of the regions that we say both as a sincere statement and a little bit of a kind of a prodding point to be made about texas history begins in el paso you so and so's anyway point <laughs> is that yes commemorating and pointing out the history and then uh, memorializing with uh, such uh, statues and things and events around town and then that one i was just referring to there for those looking over on our social media here is that statue of a uh, susan mcgoffin that does exist uh, as seen in c2 here over at the uh, the keystone heritage park which of course is one of those prehistory sites there with pit houses dating back literally thousands of years as much as we can tell here but that's one of the existing monuments here again as we're talking about the uh, 12 travelers here and if people are wondering about the name of it there yes it's 12 in roman numerals so xii travelers which is people can also find again xii travelers.org is the website where we all have everything Correct. but we are here specifically today to talk about this new monument that is coming up here. So for people who may have missed, again, our previous program, what are we seeing here with this monument? All right. Well, this is Benito Juarez as a child. Uh, he was Zapotec, an illiterate sheep herder. And then next to him is, again, Benito Juarez as the, as the president of Mexico as he was over in Juarez in 1960, I mean, 1865 as president fighting the French intervention he was there nine months he's looking at his 
a, a book that were, was that he wrote to his children and published when he was exiled in New, Me- in New Orleans and several years, and it's letters to his children. And then Benito Juarez, is hold, the young one, is holding a book wishing he could read. And then there's the little lamb. Mm-hmm. And he... Um, it's interesting that he, well, he was his, he was orphaned as a little child, three years old, and he lived with his uncle, who was the sheep herder. And one day, one of the when he was tending sheep, somebody stole one of the lambs, and he was so horrified that his uncle would be furious at him that he left the ranch and walked thirty eight miles to Oaxaca. And there, this um, Franciscan bookbinder realized how intelligent he was and taught him how to read and read in Spanish and um, Latin. And so this is a great story about learning. That's that's one of the great lessons of this monument is that children that have no learning can become presidents. It's just, it's just a great story. And so this is a very, again, an interesting formulation of a statue here. Many of the previous ones people may be familiar with within the 12 Traveler series here, such as a picture we got up here of the Fray Garcia Monument that people can see in downtown El Paso right now here. That's kind of a backlit picture, and here's one of the maquette versions here. But, uh, again, the the size of these things is also understandable as uh, very important because, well, this one is just the you know the maquette on its own here, but here it is next to uh, the sculpture there, uh, John Hauser, and it's about not – quite three times his height, I would say there, including the pedestal, of course, here. And then, of course, uh, the one that we have, the current sculpture here, here is the miniature version, the maquette version, the one that is then uh, you know, available as essentially a kind of a souvenir of it, but also as a, here is the proof of concept. Essentially, this is, of course, Ethan Hauser with the small version of it here. But uh, again, just to give that sense of size of what we're talking about here, uh, here he is with the actual, uh, the clay sculpture that was then being used as the formula and the mold for the rest of it, showing that, uh, that you know, the young boy version of this here, while in a crouch position, is definitely taller than the sculptor himself here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the monument will be like, the figures like nine feet tall um, from where they're sitting on the base to the adult what is mm-hmm. dead which is so again and then just some of the the molds that we also have the pictures of here we'll get more into the construction of it here but again just setting the table with what is going to be coming up because we also have of course the events for the unveiling of this people wondering well, where can i go see this where is it i haven't heard about it before well you're in luck it's coming it sure is on september 25th Um, The whole day, Sunday, from 1 o'clock, actually, in the afternoon on, there will be uh, activities. There will be the actual dedication and and unveiling of the statue. And then uh, after that, an hour after that, we'll probably have, that's probably when it's going to happen, is La Fiesta. And it'll be the rest of the afternoon of all kinds of entertainers, music, and uh, ways to, to celebrate Benito Juarez here in El Paso. So, again, that's going to be coming up, like you said, Sunday, September 25th at the Chamizal National Memorial. Of course, uh, people looking for that there, just kind of drive along Paisano, and you'll eventually run into it. Or more specifically, it's essentially right across from Bowie High, Bowie School. High School. That's a, And I know it's not just a random park that's across from Bowie High School. There's a lot of history in the Chamizal itself here that we've gotten into previously here. But, again, as the site and the reason we're talking about it today is because that is where this will be an install. It's not even just the events are happening there. That is where this will be installed here because – it's a significant marker of the own history of Benito Juarez himself here, and including uh, mirroring some of the existing statues on our, you know, sister cities to the south here. The date you mentioned there, 1865. That may ring some bells for anyone who has done even a, a casual study of, of U.S. history here as being a, wasn't there something happening at that point? In time? Oh, right, the Civil War. So, like, <laughs> in the immediate aftermath therein. So, I mean... It's often tempting to think about only one thing that happens at ha- in history at a time here, but no, that was the point of when we had the whole, you know, in- French invasion of Mexico, which for anyone who hasn't really studied Mexican history either might think like, wait, what? That 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 happened? But no, that was, that was during the Civil War. We can't have two of the major events happening at the same time here. So talking about the history and the point of it here and the reason that putting this at the Chamizal is very appropriate here and a whole lot of schedule of events, not even just with the unveiling. We have a lot of guests, dignitaries, speakers, and a whole lot of things that, then again, very importantly, people will be able to participate in, right? Yes, definitely. And if we can start with that, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about the, ske- the schedule of the actual speakers 
uh, dedication itself. Absolutely. Because we will have all kinds of dignitaries who will be speaking to help us dedicate and unveil this statue. And uh, one of them is Congresswoman um, um, Ven- v- Veronica Escobar here. She will be speaking, and hopefully she'll be talking something about the Chamisal Treaty, mm-hmm. which was signed uh, by um, the President of Mexico and the President of the United States, Lyndon Johnson. On September 25th. That's, the, the, that's why we chose this date. Yes. It's, it's but that was in 1964. Mm-hmm, 64, <laughs> 1964. So, and then, um, and then in 1964, at the, at, a little bit earlier, um, a Lincoln, President Lincoln, there was a big monument uh, dedicated to him over in Juarez next to the Chamazal. Mm-hmm. And we were supposed to re- reciprocate the United States with a monument of Benito Juarez so that they could face each other and so 58 years later, it's finally happening by a little group of nonprofits. We're sort of proud of that. Yep, it's quite a bit of monumental work, no pun intended, going into <laughs> making this happen here. And again, we have that picture of the Abraham Lincoln statue that does exist currently, again, in Ciudad Juarez, as facing towards the U.S. side of it, as you mentioned there, because, of course, the relationship between the two there is kind of emblematic of how things have progressed in its own way in our sector of the border and in the Chamizal, for people who are not familiar, is essentially a memorial of a border dispute that didn't turn into fighting, which is a relative rarity in world history. So the fact that this was able to be resolved through diplomacy and not through force of arms and continuing the relationship that existed between Benito Juarez and Abraham Lincoln, them being essentially pen pals to each other in their own time here and continuing that relationship and the you know cooperation and spirit of essentially brotherhood. There's a lot of values that you can ascribe to this whole relationship. And again, yes. all of that, the purpose is here to uh, kind of have that on display with these events coming up here and all of it, right? Yes, definitely. Correct. Yes. It's a great story. These two men who grew up in poverty and became presidents and then became admired each other tremendously. They never met. Mm. But when Lincoln was assassinated, Benito Juarez ordered all flags in Mexico to be half mass for a week. So, you know, they just. So finally, these two will be facing each other in friendship across the Rio Grande. And again, we are talking about that upcoming installation of the, again, new monument. Again, the model of it here up on screen for those of you looking over on our social media. You can, of course, always see our episodes afterwards. If you go over to our social media, if you want to see the pictures for yourself here, if you're in the car or something or somewhere where you shouldn't be looking at a screen, please keep your eyes on the road here. In any case, again, we'll be talking further about this. Due for that first break here already, again, joining us in studio here, that last speaker there was Jolie Polk Schwartz, a founding member of the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest, also speaking here and joining us in studio. Studio, uh, Cynthia Skivington Bum, Secretary for 12 Travelers. Again, the details on all of this. People can find that information about what's coming up here and the memorials, all the monuments and everything that has gone with them here. XIITravelers.org for the Roman numeral 12 travelers.org is where they can find that here so again got to take that first break right now coming out of this break talk a little bit more about the schedule what's coming up and again how people can get involved as well as uh, probably a little bit more on the monument itself here so stay tuned for all that and more here with more on the el paso history radio show here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archived radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano, and see their website at missiondelray.com, 915-440-2140, for souvenirs, gifts, and decor, Mission Del Rey Southwest. 
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Polk. We are, of course, the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook. Go there for our weekly promo announcements on the topics of our program each week, as well as go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, where you can find both the or essentially our online archive these days of all of our recent episodes, plus the entire series of El Paso Gold DVDs from Capstone Productions covering more than the last couple of decades of history production here in town, free and uploaded completely for your viewing pleasure, plus the 20 more recent segments from our ABC7 TV series from El Paso History TV. Also a reminder to support some of our advertisers, Pepe's Restaurant in Canyon Tio is open for in-house dining, 6761 Donovan Drive. Call Pepe's at 915-877-2152, 915-877-2152, home of the Juan and only Margarita. I will be out there today, uh, ending the uh, bit of absences I've had recently. But in any case, talking about the what's going on with some of the upcoming events involving the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. Again, speaking here in studio with uh, Cynthia Skivington Bum, Secretary and Jolie Polk Schwartz, founding members of the 12 Travelers. Thank you very much for sticking around with us here today. Thank you. It's very great much. to be here. Absolutely happy to talk with you all. So we have been talking again about the upcoming unveiling of the Benito Juarez statue. Benito Juarez, child to man, the dedication, unveiling all of these many events going on about it. Coming up Saturday, Sunday, rather, September 25th, that significant date we talked about here. And we have only just kind of begun to scratch the surface on the, the order and sequence of events that's going to be going on that day, right? Yes, we have. One o'clock, the dedication and unveiling of the Benito Juarez child to man statue will take place by Ethan Hauser. Yes, by Ethan Hauser. Mm -hmm. At 2.15, we'll start La Fiesta, and that is a great celebration. The first thing on the docket is the Bridge Youth Symphony, and that's courtesy of the El Paso Symphony Association. There's the Mariachi Universitario Canto a Mi Tierra, which is uh, from the University of Autonoma de Ciudad Juarez. 
Suertes de Charería de Asoci Aso Asociación de Charos Emilio e Emiliano Zapato de Nuevo México, and that's from uh, Señor Miguel Castro. It's the Omar Castro Riata team. Mm, okay. And then there's a Compañía de Danza Folclorico, and that's also from the university. And its uh, director is Maestro Juan Ignacio Camargo Nazar. Then Bowie High School of course. is going to have their Mariachi Orgullo, and Orgullo means pride. So it's Mariachi Pride. The director of that is Miss Amy De Anda, and they will also be accompanying the Bowie Fierce Dance Team. And the director of that is Mariana Castañada. Uh, the last thing on the on the uh, docket is Carmen Vargas Ballet Don Donatui, and it's also a, a, a folklorico, but it's it's an amazing um, group from from Mexico. So we have about three acts coming from Juarez mm -hmm. who will be on the docket, and then of course our own uh, youth groups and Bowie High School, which we're really proud to have. So a lot of events going on there, and that's, again, in addition to what's going to happen during the dedication itself. You're getting a lot of speakers, uh, quite the program going on there as well. And, I mean, just a lot of events and a lot of celebration of this. Again, the culmination of decades of work, I think, would be a pretty fair way to say here, over the very least decades of legacy of work in any case. That in I'm, any case, yes. That I'm yes. very confident in saying here because, again, we want to talk about the history of the 12 travelers itself here again we have that upcoming statue and here again is ethan hauser with the maquette there though again uh just to make sure you're not getting the idea that oh that, that's a small thing here uh that's that was just the uh the essentially model. the example the model the example here's the actual construction of it and uh it's significant in size here and again being now the fourth in the series of the 12 Travelers Monuments here that are all, and this one of Frey Garcia showing the size with uh, John Hauser, of course, uh, Ethan's father. And then the one that people may be probably most familiar with that we actually haven't mentioned yet here would be the Equestrian, the mm -hmm. statue that people definitely see if they've been anywhere near the El Paso International Airport in the last decade or so here because that has been quite the feature over there. And again, the size there. Yeah, there are those little people at the bottom there. You see not quite uh, just over the hoof of the horse there as it's rearing backwards here uh those are the sculptors so just showing just the size difference there so again this has been quite the culmination of efforts coming up for the statue coming here the latest in the 12 traveler series here so it'll be very exciting to see that being unveiled again that coming uh, sunday september 25th at the chamizal national memorial starting at 1 p.m here yes That's yes it. be sure to come with a hat and a water bottle it might be hot Oh, because it is September. September in El Paso means that uh, it's not quite enough to boil an egg on the top of your head here. Right. So keep that in mind. <laughs> yes, and bring a lawn chair too, because there's not that many places to sit. True. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful location here. Yes, well, the Chami is all having in, in previous years and hopefully coming back before too long, hosting events such as a uh, music under the stars here. So it's quite the beautiful location. It is a park and a monument for its own reasons here and memorial here. But again, uh, that's Cynthia Skevington Bum, secretary, also talking there, Jody Polk Schwartz, founding member, both with the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. Got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this break, we'll talk a little bit more about the statue itself here, about the construction of it, the process that we have seen over the years to see this come to fruition as we just kind of hinted at here so stay tuned more talk el paso after this break here on news radio 690 ktsm you are listening to the el paso history radio show streaming on facebook where you can find archive radio programs the el paso history radio show also streams on the facebook page remember in el paso when run by chief administrator barbara given baney known as bgb check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of el paso history remember in el paso when on facebook Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. 
Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549, 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in what is Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show, streaming on Facebook, where you can find archived radio programs. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. Of course, I have some reminders for you to check out some of the other great things going on and our partners in promoting local history and the events going on around there here. Be sure to check out celebrationofourmountains.org. Again, that's celebrationofourmountains.org. They have quite the schedule of events that are coming up and that they have featured on their website here. Basically, just search up Celebration of Our Mountains on your favorite uh, search engine and you will probably find them. They, of course, have the upcoming event that we're talking about listed over on their website. Again, the dedication of the Benito Juarez statue coming up Sunday, September 25th, that we are talking about as part of this program and a whole lot of other events, including some of the tours of both the natural, physical, man-made, entire environment and idea of the Southwest. So a lot of appreciation of the mountains, as the name suggests, but a whole lot more and ways you can really find more in depth about our region and the features in it. Again, celebration of our mountains.org. And of course, our friends at Monterey Asset Management have changed their name to M1EP Management Corporation. Their website, m1ep.com. That's m numeral one ep.com. Give them a call at 915-592-4549 here. But again, joined here back in studio with uh, Cynthia Skivington Bum and Jody Polk Schwartz, both the respectively secretary and founding member of the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest here. So again, that event that we have coming up here uh, the Sunday, September 25th, with the dedication of the Benito Juarez Child to Man statue. This has not been something that has just been popped up overnight here. Not that I think anyone would be persuaded of the idea that no no it's just super simple you just kind of snap your fingers i mean even in this era of 3d printing bronzing something takes a lot of time here and doing that correctly even if more technology has become available over the years of creating the statue but really the legacy of not even just what is going to be displayed in the statue there what is going to be part of the monument and the memorial and the reason it's being installed where it is all very significant but even just the history of the oral organization itself 12 travelers and how this monument came about is it's its own significant history in its own right well it really is but i think for you to first understand that the mission of the 12 travelers memorial of the 
Southwest, Mm -hmm. is to celebrate our region's rich history with monumental bronze statues commemorating the diverse men and women who traveled through the Pass of the North over the past five centuries. And that is quite a mission statement and quite a lot of territory to cover, both physically, uh, mentally, historically. And that's, again, why this will be the fourth statue in the series here, and here's some of the previous ones. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this was the most recent one, right? The uh, the Susan McGoffin statue that exists, again, over at the Keystone uh, Heritage Site here. Again, the one prior to that that is you, you probably most recognizable, even if they people may not have recognized what is going on behind it here with the equestrian that is on feature at the El Paso International Airport. And again, uh, the Frey Garcia statue that has existed now for quite some time in downtown El Paso. So odds are, I'm feeling confident in saying that people have seen this in some way, even if they may not have totally understood the concept behind it here. So again, that's part of the feature that you all be showing off with this here. So for this statue itself here, or taking a step back further, I guess we should say here that the concept of demonstrating the different people have come through influenced history in our area in its own way, and you know, emphasizing on the many different types and forums and formats of impact that people have had in our region here, then coming down and deciding, okay, who to show, because honestly, as much as like, you know, like 12 different statues, we can show off a lot of history that way, distilling 500 years of history, dozens of generations within that here into 12 points, essentially, because each statue kind of represents, okay, I guess I'm kind of lying there because, of course, this Benito Juarez statue illustrates more than a couple of points of time here, but otherwise, the previous ones have been, you know, a specific representation at a specific point in time of these individuals, even if it's also meant to represent kind of their their span of time here. So, even just the concept of 12, picking 12 spans of time here, how did that come about? Um, John Hauser uh, went to Tom Lee like in 1993, he loved Tom Lee's calendar that he'd done about 12 hours. Tom Lee, and he, and he asked Tom, could he use that same concept and do monumental mo- statues downtown, like a walk through our history, which is our greatest legacy. So Tom Lee went, of course, that's just wonderful. And he said, you choose what, who you want. I just picked 12 and they're all men, but you, you can do whatever you want. Well, John Hauser wanted men women blacks native americans he just you know wanted a complete spectrum of the people that have come through here absolutely because i mean it, all of the there's not a category you mentioned there and well beyond as well that has not been evidence and had their own impact on the history of our region here and so again this being now the new one the fourth one in the series here again of the benito Juarez statue again showing it here with the uh, the current sculptor there ethan house or again just you might be recognizing in the audience out there some of the familiarity of names here because Ethan Hauser is of course the son of John Hauser. Correct. Yes. And then John Hauser's father was assistant to Gutzum Borglum. The, the just, yeah, the major sculptor that had a lot of impact on our area, including of course you mean like oh that ever so slightly well, Mount Rushmore. Thing. I just forgot Ru- the word Mount, Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. So, so John grew up as a little boy looking at Mount Rushmore, so he thought. He's always thought big. He thought big. Big. You know, big, big, big. That's why we yeah. have the equestrian. Absolutely. Again, big is an understatement <laughs> in the is <laughs> in, in that instance there, given the, the size disparity between life, the sculptors there, seen at the base of the statue here as we have that picture up on screen. And, uh, again, that being the largest equestrian statue in the world to this day, right? Correct. And, and then the horse, uh, it represents the – Onyata expedition that brought the horse to North America because there were mares and stallions mm-hmm. and so and it went spread all over North America with his colonizing expedition and it started right here walking through the pass of the north absolutely and that's where the name literally comes from here yeah. because without that without that kind of setting up of the history here this would just be you know another point on the map here as opposed to representing what we have in the history the culture the heritage that has come from it here so then moving from of course the previous ones that we've had again the three existing ones why then the selection of benito Juarez here how did that come about how did that become the decision to be made i'd say it was about 10 years ago john hauser and ethan came up with that idea because of what an important time in our history it was when Benito Juarez was over in Paso del Norte, which is now Juarez, mm-hmm. um, as the president of Mexico when 
fighting the French intervention. And he was here nine months in this cold, bleak time with his ragged army that he ended up, you know, winning. And the French were finally kicked out or, you know, left. Mm. But anyway, no, so it's just, it's just an important, very important part of our history. It's just right across the river. And, and John Hauser just thought he was such the greatest president in his, in his mind and most everybody's mind. He just wanted a monument of, of Benito Juarez. Absolutely. And we have one of those uh, portraits, actually, of uh, the man himself there, Benito Juarez. And so, of course, in the construction of the monument itself here, again, we have, you know, some of the, again, maquettes, the the drawings that we've been showing up here. But then once you start getting from, you know, concept to reality, it's a multi-step process. And the actual casting process is pretty involved, right? Oh, definitely. It's being cast in uh, Eagle Bronze, which is in Lander, Wyoming the same foundry that did the equestrian. They're very fine. They're, and the monument's coming here next week on a flatbed truck to be installed for the dedication on the 25th. Again, and that's the reason we're talking about this here. It's not just a fun concept that, oh, we'll see it someday. You're going to be able to see it coming up here shortly. Again, the 25th year, and again, with a lot of celebrations and events happening around it here. But just for you all personally, being involved as, you know, founding members, current, you know, secretaries, and those kind of things, and everyone that you work with on these issues, I mean, what does it mean to you all to see, have again, that just for this specific monument, that decade history that we're talking about uh, from, you know, concept to fruition now, what does it mean to you all to see this now happening and, you know, all the celebration that's coming up with it? Well, seriously, when I first came back um, about seven years ago and found out that this group was actually going to be doing this particular monument, Benito Juarez has always been part of what I knew somewhere in my history, but not, not physically or tangibly. Mm. But when I found out that they were actually going to do this and fund it, I was willing to jump on board <laughs> and just go for it. I thought that this was something that was very important. And knowing I learned so much about our own history mm -hmm. and the fact that we are at the Paso del Norte, that, um, that the Chamisal Treaty was signed here, that the city of Juarez was named after Benito Juarez. There were so many things that just absolutely made me chilly all over. I was very happy to, to be involved with it and always have been. I've been very uh, excited about it. I think it's an important part of our history as well as our border. The fact that we are a peaceful border, the mm -hmm. fact that Benito Juarez was so close and he was really a friend to us and we were friends to him, especially Abraham Lincoln. So all of those things, I'm a history buff, but mm -hmm. now I'm really one. <laughs> so that's why I was so excited about this. And Jody, your thoughts on us seeing the monument coming to fruition here? Well, I'll be very thrilled. I know that'll be a very exciting moment to see the monument rolling into town on a flatbed. I hope I'm there. I plan to be there. Very exciting because it has been 10 years. It's, it's been great monuments, great, anything great takes time. And, and it's just the truth. And so it was worth the wait. And then we'll go on to the next monument after this. We want to do one about the Tiguas. The uh, 15, 1580, 1680 revolt. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the Pueblo revolt. Yeah, right, absolutely. The Pueblo revolt. So in 1680, the, the Tigua was, they were all, you know, everybody was fled from New Mexico, the Spaniards, and also many of the Tigua Indians came along with them, and then they established the Tigua Pueblo. Pueblo. Yeah, Isla de del Sur is the sur right. for a reason. So anyway, so the next monument, that it will have two monuments um, to, of the founder of the Tiguas and the war chief. Absolutely here. So again, speaking there, that's uh, Jody Polk Schwartz, founding member of the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. Also joining us here in studio, uh, Cynthia Skivington Bum, secretary for 12 Travelers. Again, the details on everything we're talking about here, including what's upcoming and, of course, the event that will be happening here shortly, 12travelers.org. That's X-I-I, -I, Roman numeral 12 
travelers.org here. Got to take that next break right now. Coming out of this next break, we'll talk a little bit further with them about the event, what's coming up here, and some of the particular things both in terms of what's in the statue and how that relates to the program that will be happening. All that coming up here with more on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook where you can find archived radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Given Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Hey. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I am your host, Andrew J. Pohl. Got to talk about some of our other great partners in talking about different aspects of local El Paso history, including, of course, Rick Kern's music podcast, Talk and Rock Radio, looking into many of the different interesting parts of uh, what you might call it the golden age of rock in town, though it has definitely continued on. A lot of the parts he's been involved in personally, you might remember Rick from having produced the Border Legends Tour for many years, and he continues that spirit again, Talk and Rock Radio, talkandrockradio.com. Check him out for all of his recent podcast episodes here. And, of course, some of our more great sponsors called 915 588 
one eight five zero for Patrick Tuttle, Coldwell Banker Heritage Real Estate. Patrick is an excellent realtor. He and his team are the reason we're in the house that I'm still in the process of moving into here, but very happy to be there. And the work that they did for us is significant. So you can call them for homes for sale or rent. Again, 915-588-1850. But again, joined here in studio by Cynthia Skivington Bum and Jody Polk Schwartz, both with the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest here. So we are again talking about everything that's going to be going on coming up for the unveiling and dedication of the new and latest statue from the 12 Traveler series, Benito Juarez Child to Man Dedication. That'll be happening Sunday, September 25th, 2022. This year, of course, at the Chamizal National Memorial, 1 p.m., right across from Bowie High School. If people don't know where we're looking at there. And we were talking during the break here that this is actually, and I hadn't realized it, but it's absolutely true, one of the first major events that's going to now be happening at the Chamizal, essentially since the advent of the pandemic. It's true. It's true. Very true, yes. And at 1 o'clock that afternoon will be the dedication and unveiling of Benito Juarez, Child to Man. And at 2.15, we're going to have a fiesta. Mm -hmm. And it'll last till about 5 o'clock. We have all kinds of activities, entertainers coming to celebrate Benito Juarez. And of course, as part of the dedication part of it as well, there'll be a lot of speakers here. And one of the points I want to make here is that uh, particularly uh, one of the things like right before the unveiling itself here you have set up on the schedule will be, of course, uh, the actual sculptor of it here again, Ethan Hauser, going to be talking about the sculpture and uh, some of his perspective on it as well. But then also, again, as we see in the wider version of it here, the book in the hands of particularly the adult Benito Wada is shown there. Uh, the book is going to have some uh, excerpts read from it. Uh, again, that book, The Notes to My Children, right? Yes, right. it is. And um, a woman that's Zapotec, Obdulia Campbell, is going to read in Zapotec a passage from the book and then translate it into English. I think that'll be really interesting. Absolutely here, because again, focusing on a lot of the heritage here, because uh, Benito Juarez, besides being significant in his own right to both the re history of our region and of Mexico as a whole here, was of course of indigenous roots himself here. So a lot of, again, covering of history, confluences of it, and the way you're all putting it together for this event that is coming up again, that dedication, September 25th at 1 p.m. What do people need to know if they want to go and see this here? Well, it will be warm. It is El Paso, and it's September. So we think you ought to probably bring some things like water, uh, probably in some kind of a container that you can keep with you, mm -hmm. um, good walking shoes, hats, and probably some lawn chairs would be nice because when you're sitting there watching things or want to sit down, at least you'll have your own seat. So lawn chairs, blankets, whatever makes you comfy. So where will the sit the statue actually be situated on the Chamizal site here? People may have been to like the amphitheater here. There's a performance space, of course, and some of the indoor things. But I mean, the major feature of the Chamizal National Mo Memorial there is the fact that it is outdoors and has extensive grounds. Yes, but it's right in front of the front door, the entryway, the visitor center. Yes, it right. is, and the big esplanade. It'll be right there, a little very large esplanade. But then there's grass all around. Right. It. Mm -hmm. So, or you know, or people can walk on the esplanade. Obviously, it's a there's a lot of room. Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to come, there's room. We'd love to have you come. It's going to be an exciting day. And again, very important to note here that uh, I mean, people should know the details, but also it's free. People it's can just free. come and do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we won't have food trucks. That's why we're saying to bring you know water. Your yeah, food. we course. are going to have water available, but I think it'd be smart to come prepared because it really might be warm hot absolutely here so again people want to find information about this it can go to xiitravelers.org here and again the dedication happening of this here again the very unique statue because it's really kind of a two for one here you're getting two perspectives on the history of benito Juarez himself here from the child to man here and all the bits of history installed on it here and again it'll be on the chamizal national um, memorial and facing south towards Juarez, of course, named after the man we are speaking about here, and also then kind of mirroring the statue that already exists here. We put up the picture a couple of times here, but just to show it further, this is the existing statue to Abraham Lincoln that already exists there in Mexico, in Ciudad Juarez, facing towards the U.S. side of things, further signifying parts of that friendship and more of it here. So this has been quite the event here and quite the preparation that it's taken for all of this we talked a little bit about y'all's expectations and you know what it's been what's going to be like to see this kindly 
finally coming to fruition here. But again, as you mentioned, and we talked a little bit about last segment, uh, the work continues here because this is going to be quite, and I don't want to take away from this moment, this is going to be important here, but yeah. if people want to be involved with 12 Travelers itself here, this work continues because we're now down, we've got uh, four down of the 12 yes, that we're we looking do. towards having in this kind of we often have a lack of sense of history in this country here, particularly uh, maybe not in like a European sense here where you look at uh, like cathedrals, say, and we look at cathedrals and think like, uh, yeah, sure, it's a beautiful building. And then you hear the fact that and it took 200 years to build. You may think, what? How did that take anything? That kind of concept of thinking of building up something for, of a building that has was in construction on the order of magnitude of the same length of existence of this country. So it can be a little bit baffling to us here, but that's kind of more the concept that you all have. This is a multi-generational effort. It is indeed. It is. And I said it before, but our history is the greatest leg the our is the greatest thing we have in El Paso. Our history. And it's been under underutilized and finally this is the point of the twelve travelers and John Hauser's desires to show that highlight and bronze monuments are in amazing history. And it's just, it's not about the person, it's more about the period. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not glorifying the person. It. It's, yeah, and it's really celebrating the uh -huh. history. And what it means for us here today, again, yes. that's speaking there, uh, Cynthia Skivington Bum, Secretary and Jody Polk Schwartz, founding member, both with the 12 Travelers Memorial of the Southwest. Again, all the details on that event coming up, the Benito Juarez Child Man Dedication Sunday, September 25th at the Chamizal National Memorial at 1 p.m. And, of course, the upcoming monuments, that continuing work, that conceptual cathedral, all you might say, <laughs> of the history of the Southwest here. All the details at xiitravelers.org, again, for 12 Roman numeral 12 travelers.org here. So thank you all very much for being with us here today to talk about both what you have coming up here in the short term and the long term and the history of it all here today. Thank you very thank much. You. It's our pleasure. Andrew. Happy to have you all along and talk about this. And of course, uh, we're going to be back in hour two of the program with more talk about some different aspects of our history, some different events going on here. But again, make sure to check out that event. But again, all the details, again, 12travelers.org, xiitravelers.org. But back in hour two of the program with more talking about next hour about what's going to be coming up with the renewed or rescheduled John Wesley Harden Secret Society. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break on the top of the hour news here on News Radio 6. 90 KTSM. You're listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. 
Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Thank you for tuning in, however you may be doing so, be it on air, online, live streaming on the free and reliable iHeartRadio app, or joining us over on the very many social media pages we're up on these days, including the El Paso History Radio Show on Facebook, El Paso History TV on YouTube, and of course on our partner pages, including Remember in El Paso When. And now, starting a history History moment at the start of hour two, as we usually do, with documentary filmmaker Jackson Polk talking this week about the history of San Jacinto Plaza in downtown El Paso. The historic park in the center of downtown El Paso is San Jacinto Plaza, located at the corner of Mills and Oregon Streets. What was once a horse corral is now a gathering space with paths and bridges, shade trees, gaming areas for ping pong and chess, and a cafe. But in 1827, the land was part of a ranch owned by Juan Marie Ponce de Leon. The land was later sold to rancher William Smith, who built the corral, and the U.S. Army drilled there at one of their early posts in the area. The city of El Paso purchased the land from Smith in 1881 and cleared the sandy mesquite field property. Then in 1903, the city council officially named the park in honor of the famous Battle of San Jacinto, when Texas successfully fought for its independence. By 1883, the park was surrounded by a fence and featured a walled pond, a gazebo, and 75 Chinese elm trees. When three alligators were added to the pond, they thrived and became a big attraction, and San Jacinto Plaza was also called Alligator Plaza. The reptiles got a new home at the El Paso Zoo in 1965, and the pond was removed. 
In its place, the city installed a fiberglass sculpture of alligators created by El Paso-born artist Luis Jimenez to honor the city's colorful past. San Jacinto Plaza was redesigned in 2016, and today this urban open space celebrates the history and culture of El Paso. Since 1954, the traditional lighting of the city Christmas tree in the plaza has officially begun the holiday season in El Paso, and San Jacinto Plaza is still the heart of downtown. I'm Jackson Polk with this History Moment for the El Paso History Radio Show. And, of course, uh, we mentioned there a little bit, but I have to further delve into some of our great partners in talking about and promoting El Paso's history here. Our great partner, a Facebook page, Barbara Given Bainey, operates the Facebook group Remember in El Paso When. You can go there for archive pictures galore, more than 33,000 members, and it's no mean feat to keep such a group on task and uh, not full of spam, which they do a very, very good job of. And so when you do use their pictures with their history attached, they ask that you do give credit, of course, to the page, but also, again, the people who do the great amount of work to keep that going and rolling and moving forward. Chief admin owner and uh, historian, affectionately known as BGB, Barbara Given Beatty. Also admins Rick Duncan, Rick Nahara, Margaret D. Smith, and moderators Ben Vincent and Al Lowe. We do appreciate all the work they do. And again, you can find us streaming over on there. But joining us here now in hour two of our program here today, we do have Patricia Kidney, president, and Chris Martin, secretary of the Concordia Heritage Association. Thank you all very much for joining us here in studio today. Oh, thank you for having us. We're really delighted to be able to come back and visit with you. Yes, it's always a pleasure to be out here on the radio. Absolutely. Have all, happy to all have you all back on, oh, particularly since we've had some uh, updates since the last time we had you all on. <laughs> we, of course, have people who were listening to the previous show where we were talking about the upcoming uh, John Wesley Harden Secret Society and then the subsequent announcement that due to the inclement weather, that event had to be shifted and it has now been rescheduled and is now coming back up here. So for those that may not know anything what we're talking about here, when is that new date and what is going to be going on during it? Well, we're rescheduling it for September 24th, which is a week away on Saturday, and the gates open at 6 o'clock, and you can be there until 10 o'clock at night. And there's going to be a lot of stuff going on during that here, and uh, people can, of course, find the information about this on primarily over on y'all's Facebook page, which is uh, Concordia Cemetery, facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery. Have those events going on there. Just search up the Concordia heritage association and people should be able to find it there here because i mean the events that go on during it here we have some pictures of uh, previous years of a uh, particularly uh, that is you patricia there in your uh, shady ladies get up and yes. uh, doing part of the performances that happen out there during this so the john wesley harden secret society it's an interesting phrase and an interesting description to describe an interesting set of events and commemorations that you all do again at the grave site of john wesley harden happening again usually a little bit earlier in the year every year but again inclement weather situations i mean there was a literal sinkhole that opened up not too far from the you know concordia itself there so it's understandable that things in deference to the weather needed to get a little bit uh, shifted around that's right we really didn't want anyone uh falling in the mud but most of all the lightning and guns do not mix I could see that. So yeah. we, you know, it was really a dangerous situation. So I'm really pleased that we're going to have good weather. And uh, we're really excited to be able to bring this part of El Paso history out here to the public. Absolutely, because what is going to be going on during this here is an interesting commemoration. And again, reenactment is a part of it here and what you all can do on the site of the cemetery and the things that can not really happened in a lot of other places in El Paso anymore. These kind of reenactments that have occasionally at points happened on the literal streets of El Paso, but this is a very appropriate and good place to be doing some of that marking and, again, the reenactment of history because you all will have your own version of, well, the actual gunfights and kind of the both history and mythology surrounding the character that we're talking about here of John Wesley Harden, right? That's true. We have people who swear that... Uh, that they're related to Harden. Of course. They, mm -hmm. Yes, everyone's related. Uh, everyone has a gun that he used. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have all sorts of stories about it. But this event started back in 1998. Wow. And uh, prior to that, different individuals, primarily Bobby McNellis of the El Paso Saddlery, mm -hmm. brought people out on the day of the death of Harden, which was August 19th. 1895. So every August 19th, he would gather a group. They would all troop over to the cemetery mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. at 1030 at night. And at precisely 11 o'clock, there would be gunfire. There would be toast. There would be all kinds of stories shared. And everyone was in costume. And it made it so real. I had heard about it in the early 80s that people gathered. Okay. But then I personally joined it in 1997. And I thought at 1030 at night, what the heck have I gotten myself into? In a cemetery, 1030 at yes. night here, there's, there's, there's a lot of stories that begin maybe in certain circumstances that uh, Edgar Allan Poe may have been a fan of here is just what I'm saying. <laughs> God, it could be. <laughs> but could a very be. different circumstances and a kind of both commemoration of history and celebration of it in its own right. And again, happening at, uh, as we showed, another picture up here, uh, this great sunset picture uh, from y'all's uh, website and social media of the actual grave site at dusk here, kind of it right just after sunset here, brilliantly lit up in the background there and that is the site where you all will actually be gathering again coming up here the renewed date coming up september 24th right that's right and we're asking people to bring their lawn chairs bring blankets something to sit on we do not have stadium seating out there yet but maybe. not yet <laughs> yes and also um to bring mosquito repellent oh, yeah. bring a flashlight and uh it's really an experience that everyone just enjoys and looks forward to. And after the reenactment by Six Guns and Shady mm. Ladies, we will then have a toast to the legacy of John Wesley Harden and his impact on economic tourism to El Paso. Both, I mean, there's some of his own history com- to commemorate and look at, but yeah, the the history after his own history, so to speak, here upon his passing, it, right. it, it didn't it didn't stop. There's not even just for the aesthetic of it, but there's uh, let's just say there's reason that there is uh, this kind of established. Well, let's call it a cage around. I like to call it an enclosure. That's a, maybe not a nicer <laughs> way to put it here, but it's yes. not necessarily for any. Um, say zombie concerns here no we but don't rather, no but rather what the living might do to the dead that's so right we we really had to put this uh up um in nine excuse me 2003 after bobby mcdellis died that night there was all kinds of damage to the historical marker wow so we decided number one we had to pay for a new historical marker to the tune of about thirteen hundred dollars hmm. so we decided to put a very uh, good-looking enclosure mm-hmm. around. And I visited several places. Billy the Kid up in Fort Sumner. I visited Clay Allison at uh, Pecos. They have some very unique types of enclosures. So we enlisted our community service workers to help us with the donation of Franklin Mountain Red Rock. Mm. And then the uh, wrought iron was donated again by one of the community service workers. And he actually added a little at the top where it has the initials JWH and the guns. And right under that, it shows his name and his, uh, it's, it's, Oh, it's in the black Zubia. part. The yes, right, yes. On the right hand side. And he says his, he really wanted this extra added. Because his grandfather owned Rosa's Cantina at the time, the, uh, oh, I can't remember. Marty Robbins. Marty Robbins, yes, Uh, the Marty Robbins song. And when El Paso came out. So he wanted this connection of gunfight history. And a little bit with that, uh, that marker you just had up on the screen, those pistols are loaded. If you go up and you actually look inside the uh, mm-hmm. the barrel where the, the rounds would normally be on a regular gun, the artist shaped um, some little bits of steel that look like the tips of bullets. And there are three bullets on that, well, at least bullet casings as part of that marker. Each one of those periods after one of John Wesley oh, Hart's really? initials, those are actual ammunition casings. Interesting so, here. So, so no live ammunition. No yeah. live no. ammunition. No, no, no. They're they're spent casings, and then the ones that are in the pistol um, are just replica. The artist really did a lot of attention to detail when he created it. It's absolutely amazing. Because, of course, even if you're doing a representation of the armament that may have been had here, uh, Harden, except for that one time, would never go forth uh, unloaded. Anyway, shall we say, even if he wasn't armed. 
Yes, I think he was always armed. Again, except for that yeah. one story for the yes, the, the, there's um, a story that leads to the in the final mm-hmm. incident where he was murdered, shot in the back. Or if it was self-defense. And again, we're going to be presenting that. Six Guns and Shady right. Ladies. This is part of what we're reenacting. His four months of time here in El Paso. And we're going to ask the audience to weigh in at the end. To vote. To see if John Selman. Constable John Selman. Who shot him in the back of the head. If it actually was frontier justice. Self-defense. Or just plain murder. Absolutely, because, of course, uh, the phrase that comes out of it here, not to have too many spoilers in place here, but the phrase that people might have is, uh, was it either good marksmanship or good judgment? That's right. That's right. So it's an exciting time. Everyone Mm -hmm. gets to be involved. And following the toast, we then will have uh, the sale of all of our merchandise. Mm. And we have Old West memorabilia. We have some Leon Metz books. Oh, excellent. We have different things for the... uh, uh, audience to purchase and then the big finale is this grand uh, ghost tour just around the loop and that will bring up uh, the end of the event and it'll be led by the gentleman sitting next to me mr chris martin well um it'll be myself and actually another one of our board members colette mays um will be Taking folks around, some of the graves we'll uh, we'll be visiting. Of course, we'll be starting off at uh, John Wesley Harden, but we'll mm. make the loop. Not to give too many spoilers, but uh, John Wesley Harden is very well guarded in death as well. There's a number of uh, Texas lawmen who uh, <laughs> were wearing the badge and the gun when he was alive, flanking him. And we'll also make our way around to the murderer's grave. Yes, John Selman mm-hmm. is actually buried there in Concordia. In fact, uh, many people may be familiar with the the word or the phrase location uh selman's grove and his is mm-hmm. just at the opposite end of that big uh, loop section from john wesley Harden. so we got some of the pictures of course of the cemetery of total here not any of the specific graves you're mentioning here but there's a lot to see out here and of course a lot of the event and what you all do during it is towards the both the you know, preservation and keeping up of the john wesley harden of course enclosure nicer way to put it there i will agree but also mean the general maintenance of everything that goes on out there right i mean all again to benefit the concordia heritage association to keep the heritage and you know final resting places uh, maintained and you know available for perpetuity right that's right we want to have the area to be a safe area we want to have the roads packed down so that wheelchairs and walkers can also go uh, easily on these roads also we we want to be able to have uh, gosh the weeds Keep the weeds down. And right now, we are being inundated like everyone else in the El Paso region. The weeds are six inches one day, and the next day, they're eight feet tall. And they're very difficult. We have 52 acres of weeds. We're considering renaming Concordia (laughs) as Concordia Forest. Yep. And so we are really, really working on them. We ask that everyone be patient and when they're visiting we ask people to bring their gloves and pull up a few sections and we really ask for volunteers to contact us to see if you would like to have a youth group or uh, someone doing a service project to give us a call and we'll schedule you and it's a wonderful wonderful thing to help out Our maintenance department and community service workers are working very hard. Mm -hmm. We hope to have them all gone by the end of December. As I would hope to have in my own yard anyway here again. That's Patricia Kidney, president, also speaking with us here in in studio. Chris Martin, secretary, both with the Concordia Heritage Association. Again, talking about the rescheduled date for the John John Wesley Harden Secret Society happening September 24th from 6th p.m. to 10 p.m. Get all the details and information on that. Find them over on the social media Concordia, Her- Concordia Heritage Association on Facebook, facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery here. So we'll talk more about that and all the details, including the history with it after this break with more here on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. 
The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page, Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archived pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. I'm your host, Andrew J. Polk. Got to tell you about what we got coming up for you next week on the program. Next week, we're going to be talking about just before and kind of the kickoff for Tom Lee Month, talking, of course, with the Tom Lee Institute and Adair Margo and staff there about all the events that are going to be coming up as part of that commemoration and continuing exploration of that aspect and through the lens of our history with Tom Lee and, of course, the many ways he influenced a lot of the projects we've been talking about here lately. But in the meantime, of course, I have to remind you about one more sponsor. It's Mission Del Rey Southwest. Go there with out-of-town visitors for souvenirs, jewelry, gifts, and decor items. They have a lot, quite the extensive selection here both the literal, decorative, and figurative flavors of the Southwest. They've got products that you can take home to enjoy and share and eat with your families here, but they also got a lot of the things that you can keep forever, including uh, their selection of Native American jewelry is quite extensive, and also their patio furniture. They've actually got this great cast aluminum stuff they've got in stock lately that looks and is sturdy as heck, but it's not quite the cast iron, so it won't quite crush your foot as bad if you happen to drop it on there. Go and check out their 12,000 square foot showroom there at Lee Trevino and Pelicano. Give them a call at 915 Five four four zero two one four zero nine one five 
440-2140. Mention that you heard us on the El Paso History Radio Show about them to get a discount. Again, missiondelray.com. They do ship worldwide or 915-440-2140. But joining us here in studio again, we are joined by Patricia Kidney, President and Chris Martin, Secretary for the Concordia Heritage Association. Of course, talking about the upcoming rescheduled date for the John Wesley Hardin Secret Society. And that again, coming up September 24th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. What do people need to know if they want to go? Well, first of all, they will enter in the Yendel Gate, mm-hmm. or Yendel, and uh, the gates open at 6 o'clock. You have an admission fee of $5 for adults, and for students 6 to 18, you have a $2 admission fee. And for all those little ones under 6, free. We like free. They also need to remember to bring their own mosquito repellent. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We have the big ditch that's quite close to us, and it's got lots of water in it right now. Yeah. Yes. And then we also want ladies to remember not to wear your sandals or your open toe shoes. Or heels. Or heels, high heels. It's just, it's a natural environment, a desert environment, and it, of course, we have we're trying to get the weeds out and the goat heads, the stickers out. But, yeah. man, you don't want that. So try to dress appropriately. And we encourage Western dress. Absolutely. As again, you have yourself at uh, various points exemplified. And, uh, again, might, might, might be doing something, again, similar for that date. I think so. I would, I would fully expect yeah, it there. And uh, one last thing on, on the ticketing. Advanced ticketing purchases are available for the adult rate on our Eventbrite. Uh, you can find that link on our Facebook page, or you could search Eventbrite, uh, Concordia Cemetery. You'll not only find our events, and we do have re- a lot of regular events right. coming up, uh, but also anytime there's, um, I found out that uh, several of our ghost tours, that some of our ghost tour partners like Paso Del Norte Paranormal Society, right. um, or as we call them, PNIPs, <laughs> um, they have their ticketing available there. So for anything mm-hmm. we have going on at Concordia, uh, to include, uh, I believe Tom Lee's stuff is also up on there for their, uh, Concordia cemetery, um, event at the Chinese section, right? All of it's on there. You can follow us on Eventbrite. Uh, we also have coming up some other events for October, but we can t- discuss that a little bit later on the show. Yeah, tell you what, we'll get into that here this next segment. Already do for that next break here, getting back on track for the hour schedule here. So again, that's Chris Martin, Secretary, also speaking and joining mm-hmm. us here in studio, Patricia Kidney, President, both of the Concordia Heritage Association. Again, talking about the rescheduled John Wesley Hardin Secret Society commemoration and toast that will happen at the end of the night there at Concordia Cemetery, September 24th, 6 to 10 p.m., all the details, Facebook, Concordia Heritage Association, facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery here. So stay tuned. More on the El Paso History Radio Show after this break here on News Radio 690 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso when on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com. 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan, near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com. 
m1ep.com. To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his Legacy Home Team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's mission trail, plus the Guadalupe mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. You can, of course, uh, follow us on the many social media pages that we're up on these days Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Dot TV, either under Andrew J. Polk or El Paso History TV, El Paso History Radio Show. Search El Paso History and you'll probably find us similarly in some ways on those platforms here. And, of course, we want to check out our promos for the upcoming editions of what we have for you on the show and also all the unique and original reporting you'll find only this week in El Paso Inc. El Paso's business journal, El Paso Inc., is available for home or business delivery. To receive El Paso Inc., get your subscription or find it digitally, go to elpasoinc.com. That's elpasoinc.com. Do appreciate uh, their work in helping us to continue to promote and talk about El Paso's history as well. And talking about parts of those history, of course, we are still joined here in studio by, of course, uh, Patricia Kidney, President, and Chris Martin, Secretary, both with the Concordia Heritage Association, talking about, again, that renewed date for the Secret Society of John Wesley Hardin that will be happening Saturday, September 24th at 6 p.m., and again, the gathering point there at uh, 3700 East Yandel, and all the stuff going on there. We've talked a lot about some of the features, the things that will be going on that night, to wear sturdy shoes, those kind of things here, but this is by no means the only thing that goes on at the cemetery. There's a whole schedule of events that both you all have, both in terms of like unique events happening at different points during the calendar, but that are also recurring, right? Oh, yes. We've got a number of, of things. We always have something going on at the cemetery every first and third Saturday of every month. Uh, we have uh, some of our community partners uh, help us with uh, providing ghost tours. Uh, so that's uh, Los El Paso Paranormals is one of them. They're the third Saturday of the month. And the first Saturday of every month, uh, we have a ghost tour by uh, Paso del Norte Paranormal Society. Um, both of them are amazing, very well attended and everything else like that. Um, but October coming up is going to be a very big month for oh, us, yeah. but especially with Halloween at the end. Literally every single Saturday plus Sunday the 30th, we have uh, an event here at Concordia on the 15th. Uh, we're bringing back our... Well, what was our walk through history, oh, but okay. is uh, has been renamed and rebranded uh, Sundown uh, Walk with the Spirits. It's a cemetery crawl type event. Uh, we have our reenactors back mm -hmm. uh, instead of independently being led, they're group led. Uh, but the best part of all, it's at night. Right, yeah. It's not in the middle of the day. So it's going to be really fun. It is a family-friendly event. Uh, ticketing information is available um, on our Facebook and also Eventbrite, like I mentioned earlier. Right. Uh, then later on down the month, we have our fifth Saturdays every month with the fifth Saturday. We have yeah. a special event, um, this because it's Halloween weekend on the, just happens to be on the 29th this year, right before Halloween is our fifth Saturday. Uh, so we've got a, a tour event going on there. And then in November, the Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend, 
we have um, a special lock-in investigation. All of this, again, mm. ticketing available on Eventbrite or links to that on our social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So, you know, we are always got something for people to come in during the day and the night and volunteers to help make these things happen are yes. always, always appreciated. If anyone has ever wanted to learn more about cemetery or even just get involved with some of our spooky ish and non spooky things, um, even if it's, it's pulling weeds, uh, cause of course we need to get rid of Concordia forest. Uh, <laughs> please reach Absolutely. out to us. Uh, feel free to send us an email, a message on any of our social media, we greatly appreciate anyone who's interested in helping out with Concordia, especially when we need to put these events on for the, for the public. They're always a big thing. And again, a lot of these events, particularly again, the you know small entrance fees that might be a part of it, go towards helping the continuing you know maintenance and operation and uh, keeping in some ways the literal lights on there for Concordia. Yes, it's outdoors, but you all do have like lamp posts and things like that. And we have water. And water. Well, there's, yeah. there's, it's not drinking water, but we do have a water bill we have to pay for um, all the trees. The El Paso County uh, Public Works and our community service workers have done an amazing job at landscaping over the past couple of years and have planted a number of trees, um, another a number of yucca all over the place. So we do have things we want to keep, but weeds need to go away. Uh, recently we had a lot of the dead growth on some of those big trees taken down. So if you haven't been to Concordia in a while, you might notice things or a couple of trees, a couple of spots in the area don't have as much shade or are a little bit shorter, but that was largely because we had, had dead growth, uh, right. that was a safety hazard and, and everything else that needed to go away. So, I mean, keeping it maintained, even to the very basic level, I think uh, a lot of people may not think about it. They just think cemeteries are these things that exist and just, you know, take care of themselves here. And that's, it takes human intervention and work to keep them from becoming feral, basically, for lack of a better term here, mm -hmm. to keep them maintained and be able, people be able to visit, you know, the sites and the history involved with it here. It takes a lot of work that you all do, a lot of very important work to make that happen essentially so again these events that you got coming up here people can find all the details there i mean a good major place for them to find it will be the concordia heritage association on facebook you also got it again search it up on eventbrite and people can find these specific events coming up like you said correct and then also everything is also uh, broadcast additionally on our instagram and our twitter we are in the process of revamping um our web page so if you guys anyone wants to go to the web page please note that uh it's getting a drastic facelift. All the links are still good, including our donation links. So if anyone wants Very to mo donate monetarily, they can donate via PayPal. Uh, at any of our events, we will have the PayPal QR code um, blocks all over. We're in the process of eventually possibly putting them up throughout the cemetery so people who just visit on a regular basis can, can donate. But if you want to donate in cash at any of our events, we do have our event jars always around. So... I mean, tips always appreciated as always in most different ways here but of course we're talking a lot about a lot of the events coming up here and that's one of the reasons we're focusing on this here today but that is by no means the only thing people uh, that can do or interact with the cemetery there because of course it's not just about some of the more historic sites that there i mean that's some of the ones you all focus on when you do the reenactments this event coming up here the john wesley hargan secret society but of course there's generations of people that have you know their family members and ancestors interred there and sometimes particularly you know for a pioneer cemetery the way that you all are styled as some things can be started getting it lost to almost the literal sands of time here and that's why you also do offer so those assert other services such as grave research right yes uh we do have a uh, one particular person who is designated he's actually been on the show not too long ago dr albert burnham exactly he is you know, Doc is quite the character. He's very thorough in his research. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've seen him out there myself combing the graves, trying to find the exact location, whether there's a head marker or, or headstone marker or not. He will find that grave as, as best as he possibly can. Um, those who do need to uh, avail him of his services, we do ask for a $10 donation, uh, and that's just to help with all the the extent of research that actually gets done and then everything that we do uh, going forward to that particular effort. 
And then, of course, not even just the you know specific you know, historic individuals out there that are a part of the Concordia Heritage Association. You all do have some specific both yeah, more memorials here, monuments as part of your particularly the one that we got up on screen right now here of the Buffalo Soldiers, right? Yes, that one was, uh, we erected that one in 2009 with the cooperation and partnership of, of the Buffalo Soldier Motorcycle Group in El Paso. And we've got 42 Buffalo Soldiers identified as being buried throughout Concordia. And these headstones in the memorial are actual memorial headstones. The actual person is not there. But he is or she is buried throughout the cemetery. Yes. And so, again, that uh, in the commemoration of the Buffalo Soldiers and their part of the history there, that is something and a very specific way that you all are also seeking donations as well, including, of course, with, you know, the Combat Veterans Motorcycle Association, including doing more of the, you know, veterans headstones and dealing with stuff like this. So maybe not exactly in this fashion, but in the same vein of making sure that they are recognized and, and kept up for, you know, generations to come, right? A majority of the headstones we're actually uh, getting for the veteran headstone replacement project. Uh, they're com- they come from the VA, but there still are processing fees and there are placement fees. So uh, it roughly comes out to about $155 per, and that's the VA processing fee. And then the fee it's going to cost for us to have the headstone actually placed. Some of these that are getting replaced are actual Buffalo Soldiers. We've had a couple of them placed mm-hmm. already. Uh, so if anyone would be interested in donating to this effort or would like to sponsor uh, a headstone, let us know, and we can help with all those particulars and everything else like that. I haven't gotten quite something yet up for that specific donation link, um, but it is forthcoming. We are still accepting donations for that particular effort in any mm-hmm. way they would like. And, of course, people can always get a hold of you all to talk further about this, including, and again, the upcoming event that we have coming oh, yeah. up on September 24th here. We'll talk more about that and more of the details and uh, get you closer to uh, what you need to know if you want to go out there after this next break here on the El Paso History Radio Show. Again, talking there, that was Chris Martin, secretary, and also joining us here in studio, Patricia Kidney, president, both with the Concordia Heritage Association. Again, find them online at Concordia Heritage Association on Facebook, also Eventbrite, many other places to find out all the details about what's coming up there. So back after this next break with more here on the El Paso History Radio Show here on News Radio 6. 90 KTSM. You are listening to the El Paso History Radio Show streaming on Facebook, where you can find archive radio programs. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on the Facebook page Remember in El Paso When, run by Chief Administrator Barbara Gibbon Bainey, known as BGB. Check out that page for thousands of archive pictures and videos of El Paso history. Remember in El Paso When on Facebook. Visit Mission Del Rey Southwest for a huge selection of El Paso souvenirs, decor, and gifts. Mission Del Rey features El Paso saddle blanket products and thousands of Southwest, Native American, and Mexico items, plus unique pottery, blankets, and turquoise jewelry. Bring your family and out-of-town guests to visit Mission Del Rey Southwest's large showroom at Lee Trevino and Pelicano and see their website at missiondelrey.com, 915-440-2140 for souvenirs, gifts, and decor. Mission Del Rey Southwest. Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina serves the old Griggs Mexican food recipes in a new location at 6761 Donovan Drive. Enjoy great New Mexican food with cold beer and the Juan and only margarita from the cantina. The managers and cooks from the original Griggs Restaurant serve tacos, combination plates, and sopapillas. Get the best Mexican food in the valley at Pepe's New Mexican Restaurant and Cantina, 6761 Donovan near Loop 375. Call 877-2152. M1 EP Management Corporation is proud to sponsor the El Paso History Show. If you're tired of the ups and downs of the stock market, invest in real estate. M1 EP manages apartments in El Paso and helps investors buy, hold, and sell property. See the website, m1ep.com, m numeral one epcom To learn more about the many benefits and long-term appreciation, call 915-592-4549. 915-592-4549. Many retired El Paso area homeowners don't know where to begin when it comes to downsizing and selling their home. Patrick Tuttle and his legacy home team follow a proven process to help retired homeowners sell faster and for more money. Call Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850 today and get your home sold faster and for more money. 
That's Patrick Tuttle at 915-588-1850. Call him today. The El Paso History Radio Show also streams on Saturday mornings on our YouTube channel, El Paso History TV. Go to youtube.com slash El Paso History TV for archives of the El Paso History Radio Show. Also on that YouTube channel, you can see for free many other videos, documentaries, and lectures about El Paso area history at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV. Additionally, watch a dozen TV documentaries about El Paso history for free there on our YouTube channel. This includes Legends of El Paso's Mountains, Gunfights of the Old West, El Paso's Waco Tanks, Mexican Revolution Sites in El Paso, and eight more TV documentaries produced by El Paso filmmaker Jackson Polk since 2001. And at youtube.com slash El Paso History TV, you can watch for free 20 short videos we produced that were broadcast on ABC7 KVIA TV newscasts. This series is called El Paso History TV and features Spanish missions and churches on El Paso's Mission Trail, plus the Guadalupe Mission in Juarez, Mexico. That church was built in 1659 and is the oldest known adobe building on the El Paso Juarez Valley. It still welcomes Catholic worshipers today. Go to El Paso History TV on YouTube.com. Thank you all so very much for joining us here for the El Paso History Radio Show, airing in this pre-recorded episode on News Radio 690 KTSM. We've covered a lot of ground here today on a lot of different subjects here. So just as a reminder, in a couple of different ways, of course, you can visit 12travelers.org. That's X-I-I travelers.org for the information on our guests from the first hour. But again, finishing up here with our guests from this hour again, Patricia Kidney, President and Chris Martin, Secretary with the Concordia Heritage Association. People can find out information on y'all. Best place right now would definitely be over on your Facebook page here. Again, Facebook, Concordia Heritage Association, or Facebook.com slash Concordia Cemetery, where they can find that. Because, again, the rescheduled John Wesley Harden Secret Society meeting going to be coming up, again, September 24th, Saturday, 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, it is a, a small fee to get in there that helps support the cemetery and does conclude more or less with that non-alcoholic toast there at the grave site, right? That's right. Non-alcoholic. But, of course, a lot of stuff that happens before that point here. I mean, the gravesite is definitely a focal point here. And, again, the uh, uh, the relitigation of his history, I guess you could say, that's a part of it here. I think so. We like to share it. Everyone has an opinion about it. And we actually do invite the audience to be like a jury at the end and just to, to vote to see if Hardin was mur- murdered by being shot in the back of the head or if it was frontier justice by Constable John Selman, or if it was just self-defense. So it's telling the story of the four months when Hardin was in El Paso. Yeah, but yeah, we have the image I don't think we've put up just yet of uh, what was going on. Uh, his card there showing his office there at 200 and a half El Paso Street in the uh, Wells Fargo building at the time there here. Interesting to put it at uh, 200 and a half. I'm not sure what that means, but he was on the second floor. I know that. Maybe he had a window. I mean, I know he had a window, but I don't know what the half means. A ladder down, perhaps. Perhaps, yes. But we're really excited. People come from all over the world annually to visit the gravesite of John Wesley Harden. He's uh, the most visited. We have about 10,000 visitors a year. And people like to leave little mementos at his grave. Mm -hmm. They leave money, different types of coins. They leave uh, gun cartridges. They leave uh, whiskey glasses. They leave love notes. They leave flowers. And the entire thing is they want to have a, a direct association with our Old West history. Mm -hmm. And we like to promote Hardin as being El Paso's most visited tourism destination i mean the fact of the connection seeking that connection to the history and the way then you all put it on display you do the reenactments as part of it here make it quite the event and quite the evening there as well so again there is a small for fee for people to attend and again what are those details they need to know and how they should prepare to come they should bring their uh, lawn chairs they they should dress they're welcome to dress in Old West clothing. Mm -hmm. They also, we want you to bring comfortable shoes that you can walk around if they're weeds and goat heads. It is a natural environment desert cemetery. We ask that people bring some mosquito repellent. Definitely, yes. And a flashlight because you are, if you, you're welcome to stay and go on the mini ghost tour afterward. 
and it's nice to always have a little flashlight. That's right, because, I mean, the, the kind of the, the crescendo of the evening, I would argue, is definitely with the actual uh, the Toast of the Grave site. But the last event that you do have that comes up as a part of it there is, again, you mentioned the, uh, the mini ghost tour right before the gates close. That's right. And Chris and Colette will be leading that around. And people get so excited after they've heard the story, then they have a chance to walk around the cemetery at night. Excellent there. So, and again, this is just one of the many events that you all have coming up here. So, again, this one, Saturday, September 24th, coming up here shortly. But it's, it's a full schedule of events that you all have both ongoing and, again, coming up here specifically this season, right? Oh, correct. Uh, like I said earlier, October, every single Saturday of the month and October 30th, we have something for you after hours. We have our regular uh, ghost tours, which are the first and third Saturdays of every month. But then on... Uh, October was the 15th October 15th we have our sundown walk with the spirit cemetery crawl mm-hmm. uh, which is the revamped version of our walk through history we'll have all sorts of reenactors and storytellers there to portray various characters from both El Paso's past as well as more specifically those who are buried in Concordia of course um, it is a nighttime event it is family friendly uh, the ticketing on that is I'll, it's upstairs. Oh, up, I'm sorry, I forgot that note. But uh, but we can find it online here again on the Facebook page and then on the Eventbrite as well. Exactly. And then on October 29th, we have a special tour that we have. October 30th, Devil's Night, Paso del Norte Paranormal Society. They also have one of their tours, um, which is something we do every year. It's It's great for everybody to come around. If you like more information, you can find us on our social media and any events that we have coming up. That's the first place we put it. So what does it mean for you all personally, besides all the many things that you all do to make this happen, to see people come out, you know, experience these events and, you know, be a part of the history that is continuing to be exhibited out there whenever you see people, particularly, you know, those new people. You mentioned the excitement that you see some people get. What is y'all's response? How do you feel about that when you see these things going off, you know, as you intend them to and the people coming out and, and really getting the sense of it? Well, first of all, Concordia Cemetery is 52 acres, and we have over 65,000 permanent residents. And it is a sacred place, a final resting place. And many of the people who are buried there are just shakers and movers, ordinary people in our past since the 1850s. So we, our, my feeling is I'm led to preserve it, and make it available for the families and visitors to come and experience history and pay pay respect to what went on before us and to honor their loved ones. So then when we're sharing all of these stories and you see the excitement and you see how people connect, it is it touches my soul to be able to connect and to share this. It is part of who I am. Absolutely here. And uh, Chris, any thoughts you'd like to add? It's just amazing to find, to see the look on some of these people's faces. Some of our guests, when they hear the stories or they learn something, I can't tell you how many times I've had folks who are long time, lifelong El Paso residents who have never heard some of these, these stories and they drive by Concordia every day. They may have lived in the neighborhood and they haven't realized that wonderful history that we have there and nearly everybody lights up they're always very interested in what else we have going on what other opportunities we have for them to come and learn more about concordia because we literally are el paso's history and occasionally we do have uh people who have family plots Mm -hmm. uh, who are still getting buried there You, you cannot buy um we're not an open cemetery like restlawn and some of the others Uh, So only those who have family already interred and they have a plot can go in there. Um, But to see the history in the headstones and the mementos that are still left at certain graves by the very living family Mm -hmm. who come by very, very regularly is, is just amazing to see how that, how Concordia still is actually part of everybody's lives as well. 
Excellent. So again, that's Chris Martin, Secretary. Also, again, joining us here in studio, Patricia Kidney, President, both of the Concordia Heritage Association. Again, that event coming up, the John Wesley Harden Secret Society, September 24th, 6 to 10 p.m. All the details there on the Concordia Heritage Association Facebook page. Thank you all so very much for coming out with here, talking to us about many of the different aspects of both the events going on, the history at Evidence, and how people can get involved and see it for themselves here and well, today and also upcoming throughout really the rest of the season here. That's right. We especially want people to come out on the 24th of September, but then come out to visit with the spirits. We call it Spirit Month in October. And then, of course, it extends on in. We have events in November as well. So we look forward to seeing you. You can reach us. Give us a call if you have comments. And most of all, come out and help us volunteer. Well, thank you all very much for talking to us about all these aspects here today. And good luck with the rest of the events there as well. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you all very much. And thank you all for tuning in to the El Paso History Radio Show, airing on News Radio 690 KTSM. Again, catch some of our previous episodes over on our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch.tv. Otherwise, have a great weekend, y'all. We'll see you all next week.